You know, if God wants to do, Gail has a testimony. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, yeah, come on up. There's a woman in my building. Yeah. She had a ultrasound, and she was in a lot of pain. It had two lumps that were obvious, and I felt them. They were hard. I asked her if I could pray with her. So that evening I went out. I was praying in the Lord that the Lord would use me for this. I prayed and prayed and commanded that ooh, whatever it was to come out in the name of Jesus, not to bother her again and fill her with the Holy Spirit and bring healing. So she touched her, her area and I put my hand over her. I commanded it to leave and in the name of Jesus. And she went back. That was the night before she was to go get another testing in a, another hospital and the doctor came out and said whatever was there is gone in the name of jesus Come on, hallelujah Come on. hallelujah that happened to me years and years and years ago same thing myself i went to the milton hospital the doctor said go right away couldn't even touch my stomach it was so i was screaming when they were doing the ultrasound and they found a mass they said we're taking you down to the oakville hospital for further testing and they supplied a taxi with a Christian volunteer in the back seat with me, and we were praying the whole way down. And I got there, and they did more testing, and the doctor came out and said the same thing. Whatever was there is gone in the name of Jesus. Come on, Lord, we worship you. I live in a building. As I was leaving from praying with her, I still had the presence of God on me. And I went by the lounge. We have a lounge on every floor. And I went by the lounge. There was a PSW, personal support worker, in there on her break. As I was passing, the Lord gave me a word. And it says, give it to her. So I went in and I said, do you have a little girl around you? And she said, my granddaughter, she's four years old. And I pray with her and she says, amen. And she believes in, in Jesus. And I said, well, she's gonna be used by God for ministry. I don't know if it's gonna be a worship ministry, singing, some kind of uh, ministry. And she says, I agree. And then the day after I go into a store, an elderly lady, was looking at a nice top. I said, oh, that's beautiful. And then I said, do you have a grandson? And she says, I've got two. And I said, well, one of them, the hand of God is on that one, and he's going to be used mightily of God. And, mm -hmm. she, and she said, it's the eldest one. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Shalabakayana. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, come up here. Johnny, come up here. I want you to pray for Johnny. He brings excitement, oh, doesn't he? He does. He does. He does. Actually, can we all stand and stretch our hands to Gail? She's an amazing. So if you actually, many of you don't know, but she's been with Catch the Fire for years. And uh, she's been with Catch the Fire for years. She's full of prophecy. She loves praying for people. She loves her, the cry of her heart. She'll sit with you after service for an hour if she has to pray she's done it for me because so i know who she is and where she's come from so gail i just you know you talked about the greater works and delivering that word over you and proclaiming decreeing and declaring this is your year this is your year where you're going to see those greater works happen miracles signs wonders you stood and you stood and you stood strong. But this is the year to move up and watch the Lord move in your life. I bless you. Call for a covering over your life. And I say, go, daughter of God. Go, go, go. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, now you prophesy over. It has been a long, long time since I have felt the anointing coming from a worship member and i felt it just flowing out of you and god has many greater things in store for you he's going to use you in larger territory he is going to use you mightily for his name and you have a heart that knows where you end and he begins and that is important in the name of jesus the fire of god fire 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 fire, fire on you fire the fire of god right there in your bones take it take it take it take it take it take it more more lord more lord more lord come on thank you jesus yeah stretch your hand towards johnny thank you father we ask you let the presence of god flow through him yes lord for him and debbie and for their children thank you jesus thank you lord we receive the anointing that comes through him through worship 
and all that he brings to this church. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, more, Lord, more, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, if his anointing increases, it blesses us. We will get blessed. Things will happen in our life, you know. That's, we got we to gotta keep our eyes open, ears open, where the Holy Spirit wants to move. And if we're sensing from that, we just need to obey. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Father, we bless him. We bless him. And Debbie. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. You may be all seated. Thank you, Lord. Wow. So good. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, continue to play for blessing. Yeah, that's fine. Wow. This is so good. Well... I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> this is so good, isn't it? I like when the, when the Holy Spirit moves, doesn't it? It just absolutely blesses me. You know, this is so good. Well, I just want to sort of pick up where I left off uh, for the offering. Um, as I mentioned last Sunday, that um, the Lord spoke to me about building an altar uh, at Catch the Fire Mississauga and as we build this altar for the Lord, we will experience, you know, as so many of us have been prophesied, Irene did it, Gail did it, and Marina has felt it, you know. So as you give, as you sow into this church, I just want you to know that the Lord will honor you. You know, I just want to share a very quick testimony. Uh, this is sometime last year, if I've got it right, or maybe in 2020 uh, year. I was sitting and watching television, and I don't know if you know uh, Dick and Joan Lifeline today. Um, they are a Canadian ministry they have uh, in Alberta. And I was watching them, and he was asking, uh, you know, hey, if God is speaking to you about sewing into buying new cameras and, and so on. And as I'm listening to him, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, from the church, give him $500 for new cameras. And I'm like, God, I've never known this people. Lola. I kind of had a thought for a minute or two. And the next moment I said, no, Lord, I'm not going to disobey you. I sold the $500 into his ministry for, for Victory Church or uh, Miracle Church, uh, uh, something it was called, and I gave it to them. And I said, I don't understand, Lord, but I'm going to do it, okay? A year went by and we connected with this church and did you know the Victory Church sign that you see outside, that's the same branch he belongs to. So the Lord opened this church building for us, you know. And uh, you have no idea, you know, some of you have been here for, with us for so long, you would know that we used to be in a school, we had to set up the and can, you know, we would run around setting up this and that and do all the work we would do. And God is beginning to bless us. So I'm saying this to say this, is that as you're sowing into this church, I just want you to know that sowing enables you to see what God is about to do. You know, when David bought that threshold from Aruna, you know, he said, I'll pay, it's going to cost me something because that's what I want to pay. And he bought it. He bought it as a king. But what did he see? He saw the temple of God built by Solomon. And not only that, you know, the blessings began to flow. If you read about Obadidim, who was a worshiper in the house, when the presence of God was in his house, he, his whole entire family got blessed. I've just been studying this morning about Obadidim. I've been studying about Asa. I've been studying about Z Zerok, the, the priest. Like, what were they doing that they generations and generations to come were being blessed. You know why? It's because they dedicated themselves to the Lord. You know, and I'll, I'll teach on it somewhere in February, but I just want to encourage you, don't be afraid to sow into the kingdom of God because your giving is, does not go to waste. So I bless you as you sow and you all know how to do it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I want to talk to you um, about what I shared last week. 
and I want to kind of pick it up where I left off. I want to sort of, some of you, if you missed it, um, those who are watching us online, uh, you know, make sure you watch part one because then it will help you understand. But those who are all here, I just want to give you a little, a close shot of what I really sh shared last Sunday. You and I came from the Trinitarian love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You and I have been placed in our family to demonstrate the love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You and I have been placed in a church community so that we could become a blessing to each other. That's what I shared about it last Sunday. And then I also touched on when we are not in the presence of God or when we are not in the Trinitarian love of God, that's when we begin to look for our identity. Let me say that again. When you do not find yourself in the presence of God, when you do not find yourself, like what we did this evening, man, it was so beautiful. You know, like an hour or 10 minutes, something we were in worship. When we do not find ourselves in the presence of God, that's when we begin to ask all the questions. Who am I? Where I come from? What am I supposed to do? Where am I going? All these questions begin to arise because when you're away from the presence of God, you are now in the world, and the worldly questions begin to arise in your thoughts. And the world is ready there to give you the answers, which is not truth. So I just want to leave it there. That was I shared last Sunday. A lot more I shared last Sunday. So if you haven't watched our teaching, I encourage you to go watch it. But I want to pick it up from something that the Holy Spirit has been ministering to me personally from John 10, 35 and John 17. So let's turn to John 10, and I want to kind of pick it up from there. And if you please allow me just to go a little deeper today, and I, I promise you, I'm on this journey because I truly believe that we are on to something, not just as a church, but as every individual, every individual I mean, you and I must step into the very experience that Jesus has. I, I, I hope you're catching what I'm saying. Jesus is someone that we always talk about and we always like diminish ourselves and we always think a little bit about ourselves. Well, that's Jesus, the Son of God. But some of the scriptures that I'm going to share with you today is going to amaze you that you and I are entitled exactly the way Jesus has operated on this earth. And that's where I want to sort of help you today a little bit more. Okay? So let's look at John chapter 10. Just to kind of begin with, you know, just to give you a backstory, the he's talking to the people, the Pharisees, and they're ready to take a stone and throw at him because of what he just said. And this is what he said in John 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. That's all he said. I and the Father are one. For you to understand what did that really mean. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, the Shema, the Lord is one. When he said that, they were completely startled by what he just said. When he said, me and Father are one. Basically, he said to them, the Lord is one. That means I am included in that. And they were mad at him. And look what did they do at verse 31. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, We are not going to stone you for a good work, but for blasphemy, because you are merely a man, but you make yourself out to be God. You see that over there? He, he is a man completely, a man standing before them, who laid down his deity as the son of God, but he is not diminished within himself that he is still fully God through the Holy Spirit. And he's standing before them, me and the Father are one. 
and they got angry with him and ready to stone him to death. How could you say that you're a son of God? Look further. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I want you to get this, brothers and sisters. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. If he called them gods, men to whom the word of God came. My brothers and sisters, if you get this scripture, you will begin to understand who you are in Christ who you are called to be. What are you supposed to be on this earth for? To men to whom God has given you the scriptures. Men to whom God has given you the word of God. How many have received the word of God? We all have received the word of God. Let me give you a little hint here. We're all hearing the word of God. But are we listening to the word of God? We are hearing the word of God. Are you listening to the word of God? When you listen to the word of God, your mind begins to act for you. When your thoughts begin to act for you, the thoughts of God begin to move in you. The thoughts of God begin to operate on your behalf. That's what Jesus is trying to drive into them. Pay attention again. If that is true, then do you say of whom the Father sanctified? set apart for himself and sent into the world you're blaspheming because I said I am the son of God stay on that same thing and turn to John 17 now because the question I began to ask I said Lord how do I know I can operate exactly the way you operate how do I know how do I do the works as Gail said today, greater works you're going to do. Man, John 14 verse 12, that, that's what she shared. Greater works you will do. When that is shared, like, Lord, how do I get into that greater works? And this is something I've been asking, and enough, it was right enough that today she prophesied over me. Isn't that on, on right on the nose? Greater works, and Jesus did greater works. And then Jesus said, greater works than these you will do. He's telling us. Right? And yet we question it like, God, what greater works are you talking about? I can't even raise a fly from dead. How can I going to do that? And I'm kind of struggling and I'm fighting with God. And then I began to read John 17, which is a prayer of Jesus before he gets put on the cross. Let's look at John 17. And that's where I found my answer and your answer. I love Jesus so much after I began to read John 17 that he not only prayed for himself and for the disciples, he prayed for you and I. Isn't that amazing? He prayed for you and I. And that's what excites me that Jesus knew before you went to the cross that some 2,000 years ago that I had you on my mind. You know the lovely song I had always, you on my mind? Listen to that song. Yeah, I had you on my mind when he went to the cross. When he went to the cross, he had Dennis on his mind. When he went to the cross, he had Susie on his mind. When he went to the cross, he had Lena on his mind. And bless you, and the whole list goes on. And Jesus like, I'll do it, my father, because I have all these people in my mind, and I want them to operate the very way I work. Now let's look at John 17. Let's look at, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but let's look at verse 3. He's saying to the Father, I have glorified you down here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. He came on an assignment and he finished the assignment. And then he goes on to say, let's kind of go down to verse 20, where I began to ask the Lord, Lord, what about me? What about me, God? And then he said here, I do not pray for these alone. Who are these alone? The disciples. But also for those who believe and trust in me through their message. That's you and I 
who believe the word of God. You know, I was just talking to, I can't remember who I was talking to. Thomas, one of the disciples, came to India. Who was, they called him the Doubting Thomas. And he brought the gospel to India. He shared the very words of Jesus in India. We got the message today. And so you, everyone in this room who, are, who live in your own country, you got the message. How many got the message? We all got the message. But here's the key word. Those who believe and trust in me through their message. What is he saying now? You don't miss this. That they all may be one. Just you, Father, are in me, and I in you. They also may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Shema, Deuteronomy 6.4, the Lord is one. Because he said, I and the Father are one. Now he says, everybody who believes in me is in that Shema. Did you get it? You and I are included in the Trinitarian love of the Father even to this very moment. You and I get to reveal His glory in our family. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, hear me well. You pick up the phone next time somebody calls you or you, or you begin to pray with them and you see what's going to happen in your, in your family. Every time Marina and I, we talk to our family, we always close with this, can we pray for you? We always say this to them, can we pray for you? And they say, sure. Because they feel a little obligated, oh my gosh, now they're asking, oh, sure. We pray immediately, and we are seeing God is moving in their homes. We are seeing God is touching their life. We know one of our cousins has been calling Marina, talk to her for almost three hours, and saying like, and I got this best Christmas little greetings from my cousin who said, Christ in you. Like she never says that to us. What is happening? God is working in you, through you, in their life. The Christ in you, the hope of glory, which we always talk about from the book of Colossians, is this one right here. Deuteronomy 6.4 and John 17, if you take them and begin to read it and meditate upon it, you and I are included in the oneness with God. And it kind of feels like, yeah, it feels good, but then I got to go live the real world. My friends, get excited. Things are going to change in your life. Get excited. Believe for the things that you never believed in your life. Ask for the things you never asked in life. Stand on God's word and begin to ask and you will see things will begin to happen. Did you know on Friday, Thursday night, I was on a call at almost 11 o'clock in the night because I'm working on a project in India because I have a purpose in my life and the purpose was to plant schools in India for underprivileged kids. I said, God, you put this word in my heart that you start schools in India for underprivileged kids. I said, God, I'm going to do it. And I began to pray and seek the Lord. And I said, I got to call this man. He is a very influential man in India. And I said, I, God, I pray if this man will say yes to me. And I began to get him on the call with him. And I began to share my story. I said, listen. We got about 100 kids in Nagaland. Our church has been supporting for so long, we can't ask our church to do any more. I got some other friends within Cash if I was willing to support, but I need you to help me to set up this Section A company where I want to start schools for underprivileged kids. Would you work for me? Would you work with me? Would you help me out on this? Guess what happened? You know, every time I talk to you, I get excited faster. I'm like, really? Tell me more. He said, did you know my boss told me that we got to scrap the Superbook Kids um, thing out of CBN? Okay, I already let it out, so I told you where I, who I talked to, you know. And I said, because nothing was happening about it. But I have a passion to see these children being touched. And you came up to me and you said, can we do Superbook Kids together? 
And twice we did it. We had about 75 kids come and attend it. You know, I'm so excited because you did it. Otherwise, today I would have lost that thing. I want to help you have, make this happen. Now, why am I saying this, my brothers? Uh, you desire your purpose, your plan. It doesn't have to be in a church setting. It could be something. Mothers, let me talk to you for a moment. You get on your knees and you ask God for your children. Pray God for your children. Grandmothers, grandfathers, pray for your children. God, I want my children to go have this to happen. God, I want. And God hears your prayer. If that could be just your purpose, just do that. You have family members who do not know the Lord. Get on your knees and begin to pray for them. God will hear your prayers. I'm getting so excited about this, friends, because I believe we are in a season where the Lord is ready to tear open the heaven and demonstrate his glory through our lives. Our lives. But I am nobody. I'm a little thing. Yeah, the little thing is all he wants. And he will use you in a powerful way. That was point number one. Read John 17 and make it your prayer. Number two. It's from Deuteronomy 31 verse 23. Joshua was commanded to be strong and courageous. One of the things that we as Christians, we slip away into the worldly things or the things of this world is because we are not bold enough or we are not courageous enough. What is the meaning of strong? That means you prevail. When nothing is going around you, you keep going. You sustain. You withstand. You keep like, God, you have not given up on me. Courageous. What is the meaning of courageous? Be determined. Be determined. God, you gave me this word. I'm going to stand on it. God, you promised me. I'm going to live by it. And that's what is called be strong and courageous. Amen? Everybody awake? Good. Now let me get a little deeper and let, let me get more, give you guys some, today I promise to tell you how to identify your territory. How many would like to know? Okay, ready? Here we go. In Joshua 1.3, Joshua was said, everywhere you put your foot, that's where I've given it to you. Right? Territories are given by the Lord Taking possession of your territories is my part or our part. Territories are given by the Lord. Taking possession of us is my part to do it. Let me, let me kind of rephrase what I'm just saying. When you get a prophetic word. Now, today I got a prophetic word. Okay? Greater works are going to come. Now, how does that work? That means I got to look for things that is impossible by me. Are you, are you getting it? When your prophet, prophetic word is given to you, I got to look for things that is completely impossible by me. It's only impossible by, possible by God. So I will get into some activities or something that the Lord will lead me. I say, God, this is something I cannot do, but I know you can. So I'm going to put my hand with you and I'm going to partnership with you. Lord, I want to see this happen in, my, in our lifetime. That's greater works. How do you identify your spiritual territory? It all begins with spiritual territory before it gets physical. Conviction from God inspires us to find our purpose. Your purpose and your convictions have to come together. Okay? Let me, let me address this in a little different way. Most of you in this room have a full-time job. I understand that. You all have commitments to your family. I understand that. You all have things to do in life. So what defeats the purpose of like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I want to help you see today is that 
if you allow God to step into your life, he will do one step at a time. Let me use an example. Let me talk to mothers for a moment. Marina and I have now grown up boys, okay? We don't pray the same prayer what we prayed when they were little boys. Do you understand? We pray a different prayer today. They are in their 30s and in their late 20s. So we pray a very different prayer for them today. Some of you have little kids, so your prayer is very different to them. Your prayer must always be on the upfront of your life for your children. Mothers with little babies. When we go to meet our grandson, we pray a different prayer. We don't pray the same prayer for our older son. What am I saying in my brothers and sisters? You have to bring your purpose before the Lord and you have to let it rise out of you. You have to be convicted in your heart. You cannot pray a prayer to God. God, would you please bless me? God, would you please give me that little bonus? You're just praying a prayer that's very soulish. You're not coming in agreement with what God wants to do with you. You got to pray dangerous prayers for yourself and for your family. Then you begin to step out of the box and say, God, I am believing. I am not getting into 2023 the way I was in 2022, like the way Johnny said. We want to see something happen in a life we've never happened before. I got to switch the way I think. And you will see things begin to happen. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. The word of God doesn't tell you to fear. It tells you to have faith. Now let me touch on something. We all have gifts. We all have talents. We all have abilities. Let me try and help you understand. It's the same thing. Gifting. If I pick Bernie as an example. Bernie is gifted in all these IT stuff and this stuff. That day he was helping me. I didn't know how to put even my cash the file logo on my email thing. I, it got disappeared somewhere. He helped me bring it back. You know? He's gifted in that. If I could use Bernie as an example. He's got gifted in trying to make sure the media part is done this way, that way. He's got gifted in that. That is your doorway to understand that your purpose in life is through your giftings. Are you listening to me? Susie is now our new accounting person, helping me and Marina. Okay? She has done accounting for 10, 12 years. She's gifted in that. And so, because she's gifted in that, I can trust her with numbers. We're all gifted, and we all have been given the ability to do things. And it's been given by God. And then God has given you the gifting, you use that as your doorway to know that this is where God is taking you. Because every gifting and everything is connected to the purposes God has for you. What's my purpose in life? Tap into your gifting and you know your purpose. Stay on the gifting and you know your purpose. I'll tell you my true story. We just got saved Probably 1999, 1998, we got saved. I was still at the hotel. I had a dream to own a hotel, to run a hotel and all that stuff. And I'm like, God, I, took, I dragged Marina. Let's lay hand on this building and let's buy this building. And let's have a hotel and all that thing. I even took a thousand dollars from my account and I gave it to the worship leader, Owen Herter. To this very day, I remember him. I said, could you pray for us? We want to buy this hotel. Nothing happened. Because God's purposes are different than what you desire. But the moment I got into the ministry things of it, things begin to happen in my life. Your heart must come in alignment with the purpose God has for you. And you can tap into your gifting. Administration is my gifting. And I have to tap into it where God wants me to take you. Marina is amazing. She wants a kitchen spick and span. 
I, she gone home and come out. I said, how are you? She looked around the kitchen. I'm fine, because she saw the kitchen is clean. <laughs> if the kitchen is in a mess, oh, it's a bad day for me. You know? So, so we all have our gifting. That's only a fun way. Now she's going to not give me a dinner tonight. You know? Let's turn to Proverbs 19, verse 21. Turn to Proverbs 19, verse 21. I want to shed light on this a little bit because most of us as Christians are unable to see some of the things in life and we are very anxious and frustrated because God, I want to do this God and I want to do that God and it doesn't seem to happen and here is a scripture that will help you. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. Let me read that again. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand, that will prevail, that will think. What am I trying to say here, friends? Like I told you about my hotel story, I can have all the plans I want, but if it does not fit into the purpose of God, the plans of the, the, the purpose that the Lord has placed you into, it is not going to prevail. That's what I have learned when I've turned 60. It took me a long time to learn this. That you can keep on planning, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this. But if it does not fit into the purpose of God, into the Lord's purpose that he has designed you for, you will not see any fruitfulness in that. You'll be still frustrated. You'll be still anxious. Let me give you one more scripture. Turn to Isaiah 46, verse 10. Isaiah 46, verse 10. This is the Lord speaking through his word. And what he says is what he does, according to Numbers 23, verse 19. Look at Isaiah 46, verse 10. Declaring the end and the results from the beginning, from ancient times, the things which have not been done, saying, my purpose will be established, and I will do all that pleases me and fulfills my purpose. So... Since I brought two scriptures to you, I want to help you understand. Take this week and begin to ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that is within you. Lord, you, haven't, you have given me these giftings. You have given me these desires. You have given me these interests. Are they in line with the purpose that you created me for? Are they in line? And begin to identify if they fall in place. I'm almost done. Are you guys enjoying this? Once you identify... Just stay with me for a little bit, little bit today because this is very important. Once you identify that your, your territory, your territory is like a wineskin. Because now you're going to do something new, something different. Every time a wine has to be put into a new wineskin, what does it do? It stays because the new wine stretches the wineskin. You will be stretched. Are you understanding? You will feel uncomfortable. You will feel challenged. You will feel like, I didn't expect this, Lord. I thought, I thought you said you're giving it to me. It's going to be a smooth ride. It won't be a smooth ride. He is going to give you lessons how to get through it. But you and I are required to stay focused on what has been given to you. Be strong 
and courageous. That's what was told to Joshua. Every time he took over a land, he was given strategic plan how to overtake them. Be strong and courageous. He was stretched. He had to talk to the sun and moon, and the sun and moon had to stop. What a faith he must have been given at that time. Are you, are you with me? Let me give you one test one, okay? Something we all struggle with. At least I, I do. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 8. And then we'll break into groups for, for 10, 15 minutes. Deuteronomy 8. This is about finance. How many people like to admit finance is one of the most difficult area? Right? You know, the study has done the number one issue in a, in a couple's marriage is finance. The number one issue in a family setting is finance. Let me give you some insight from the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, let's read from verse 16. He fed you manna in the wilderness which your fathers did not know, so that he might humble you and that he might test you, pay attention to that, to do good things for you at the end. Otherwise you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made this wealth. But you shall remember with the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant to your fathers as he did this day. Let me paraphrase this in a very simple way. When the Israelites were fed manna for 40 years, they were given manna, same thing every day. How would you like e eating chickpeas in different form for 40 years? Just think of that for a minute. Chickpeas, one day chana, the next day patties, the next day dry chana. 40 years just doing the same thing. Just think of that. And he, the Lord is trying to bring an attention to us over there. He said, so that I may test you to see whether you will come out at the very end. And then he brings a revelation. We look at in verse 17. Otherwise you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand has made this, me this wealth. Most Christians struggle with this. Well, I'm working hard. Well, I'm doing this. I don't have time to think about anything else if my life is consumed all about job. If I consumed a lot. And God is trying to bring to our attention it is I who has given you the power to get wealth. The ability to get wealth comes from God. The ability to make money comes from God. When we shift our focus from God to me, I've just lost it. And that's one of the main reasons the purposes of God is not seen among Christian communities or Christian families because their central focus is like, I got to make a living. Which is all valid. But you and I must come to a point in life and I must recognize one of my greatest regret in life is that I've realized it too late in life. My God, I wish I understood this over 35, 40, when I was 35 years old, when I was a lot younger, when I had a lot more hair. <laughs> and like God, I, and I'm trying to understand it now. But God had to put me through test. Put me through test to understand. If you just hang in there and trust me, it is I who give you the power to get wealth. So I just use that as one simple analogy for you. I want to leave you with two things. We're going to spend 15 minutes. And you're going to pray for one another to identify what your territory is. I've given you hints. What's your gifting? What's your talent? What's your purpose? We'll identify that. And number two, when you get home, okay, ask the Lord to show you what is your territory.
What is your purpose? What's your plan? For some of young mothers who are in this room, like you're like, I don't really care at this point. I just want to get my life. I want my son and my daughter to grow up, shoot 10 year old like that, just like that. So I don't have to babysit them anymore and change their diapers and then I can just move on with life. Let's go through the 10 years. I know all the young mothers are giving me some very funny smile, <laughs> you know. Hey, the good news is the Lord has a plan. Let's all stand. How about you just hang out with like 10 minutes and, and, and just begin to just pray with each other. That's all I'm asking you today. Just pray with each other. Lord, give, us, give me an opportunity, Lord, to know what's my purpose. God, give me an opportunity to know what have you placed in my heart so that I could follow so I could say, this is what I want to do. God, so I could know that this is where I'm supposed to go. So I bless you and I release you. Let's get into groups of two or three. Not more than that. Let's do that right now, friends. Come on, yeah, just find somebody. Yeah, just get into groups of two or three men if you want to get with somebody. Two or two or three and just begin to. All those who are watching us online, I just want to say, you know, I'm continuing this teaching on how to identify your new territories. And I pray that you would hear from the Father this coming week of what God has called you to be and what he has purposed you to be. I pray that your identity in him will be first found through Jesus and through his wonderful presence. And I pray that the word of God will instill in your spirit to know that God has a purpose for you. I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.